So hello and welcome to this webinar on adding live case simulations to your teaching mix. I'm Antoinette Mills from the Case Centre and I'm going to be the host for this session. So the Case Centre is the independent home of the case method and we're dedicated to advancing the case method worldwide. This year it's our 50th anniversary and we've got loads of exciting things coming up to celebrate. Um, you can check out an interactive timeline on our website. And in June, we're going to be revealing the top 50 cases from the last 50 years. And November sees a really exciting initiative. We're going to be launching a new impact index that will rank schools on the impact their case writing has had globally. So watch this space for that one. Now, alongside our case workshops and scholarships, our webinar programme is a key activity to deliver our mission. And we're really delighted to partner with Live Case today to bring you this particular webinar. We're lucky to have Antoine Duvauchel, adjunct professor at INSEAD and co-founder of Live Case as our speaker today. And I'm gonna hand over to him in a moment. After he's led the main session, I'll spend a few minutes showing you how to find Live Cases on our website. So you'll be fully informed about everything. Then at the end, we'll have a QA. and a So please feel free to post any questions you have in the chat during the webinar. We may try and answer some of those questions as we go along, but anything that we don't get to, please be assured that we'll pick that up at the end. So I'm gonna hand over to Antoine now for what I'm sure is gonna be a really inspiring and informative session. Antoine? Great, thank you very much, uh, Antoinette, and uh, uh, thank you for this uh, uh, very kind introduction, and thank you also for uh, uh, the opportunity to be presenting um, uh, to all of you, uh, educators from around the world, uh, to share um, what uh, what we think uh, is a, is a pretty powerful um, educator tool that we can add in the mix of our uh, of our teaching. Uh, uh, wherever it might be and whatever topic uh, it, it may be. Um, what I thought uh, I would do uh, today on this call is to is to reintroduce live case at a, a sort of sort of like a, a big picture level. In case you missed the last uh, uh, the last session introducing uh, live cases, which I think occurred before Christmas last year, um, and then we'll I'll dive more into how can we use live case in our courses, uh, how do we prepare for them, what happens when we're running them, what to do uh, during the debrief, what to do afterwards, um, and finish on discussing. Um, the five live cases which are currently on offer uh, through the case center uh, for you to get an idea of, uh, of what the learning objectives are, what are the audiences uh, and, uh, and, and how they best, uh, well, how they can best be, uh, uh, be run. So basically three big moments, introduction uh, to live case, um, uh, a first discussion around how to place those in our, in our courses, and then a more detailed overview of the five current live cases on offer on, on the case center. Um, there will be some natural breakpoints as I go through the uh, through the the webinar, where I might sort of like take a pause and see if there's questions that uh, uh, I can answer at uh, each one of these uh, three segments that I just described, and then leaving some time at the end for for whatever we may not have been able to um, uh, to, to 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 cover. But Antoinette might uh, uh, answer some of those as we as we go uh, through this. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen. Just uh, start introducing uh, live case. So one second, share sound. Okay, great. So live case. Essentially, um, uh, we're uh, educators, uh, so we are the ones who created this uh, this pedagogy and its associated uh, web application. And we wanted to build a tool which we thought was useful for ourselves. And once we figured out uh, uh, that it was, we thought, wait, we should maybe try and share this uh, uh, to a broader educator population. And where we were coming from is that when we're thinking about like some br broad set of teaching materials or tools that we have at our disposal, to run classes, be them online or, 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 or in person, is the age old case study still very powerful as a teaching material um, and, uh, uh, and, and much easier for us as educators to, uh, to create. We need a word processor some time and maybe access to, uh, to some, some, some insights and then we can create a case study uh, for some really powerful discussions in class. Then on the other side, we have full blown simulations like Mount Everest from, uh, uh, from Harvard, which is a wonderful simulation. Uh, again, very powerful multi-role, great graphical interface. Um, the issue there though, however, from an educator perspective is that they're much more expensive to, uh, to create and to produce. We may need hundreds of thousands of, of euros or dollars or, um, uh, or, or, or any other currency that we might be uh, using more regularly. Um, and, uh, and we need to manage coders and designers and writers and, and it's quite a big task. 
So we kind of thought like, could there be something in the middle, something that's maybe more digital, more interactive than a normal case study, but, but uh, uh, can still easily be created uh, through a digital uh, web application. And this is where we came uh, up with the idea of live case, which we think is more engaging and immersive for learners, but way easier and cheaper for educators to do. And we're doing, um, and sorry if you heard the joke already in November, um, the, the, what uh, strategy professors tell us never to do, which is go for the middle ground. So please wish us luck, but uh, as the other saying goes, hope dies last. <laughs> um, so. Um, what is a live case? Essentially, it's an immersive learning experience. It's an interactive multimedia scripted and now AI uh, generated chat simulation uh, that uh, essentially tries to engage and, uh, and stimulate and challenge our, 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 our learners where they don't really just read the case study. Uh, they actually have the protagonist role in the story that we've created for them. It can be fictitious or it can be uh, real. It depends really on what the author uh, has done. Although I will not talk about uh, too much, maybe towards the end about the authoring side, just want to say that the, on the authoring side, it's a no-code AI-powered uh, authoring tool. So it's basically a click-based interface to create a, 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 a live case. So that's what the live case is. And I thought that what would be useful would be for me to uh, present, uh, to show you a quick little demo so that you can you know, visualize this. Um, and see what the interaction is. So I'll show you what it looks like from the learner perspective. I won't get the chance to show everything uh, today, but hopefully it'll give you a sense of what the experience uh, could look like and feel like. So I'm um, on different tab now. This is the web application as it looks on a, uh, on, a, on a computer. It works on tablets and it works on mobile phones. There's nothing to install. It's just a website. People can log in, GDPR and cybersecurity compliant. And we also are... Um, we have plugins with Canvas if you have Canvas in your in your institution, uh, so students can also just log in uh, using that, and we can do other uh, integrations if you have a if you use another LMS tool in your in your institution. So uh, you can see that right now we're inside uh, a live case. It's the one called uh, Plymouth. Uh, it's one that we. Uh, uh, that we have through uh, the case center and I'm coming in, I've got this little uh, live case bot that uh, is giving me a little message. And essentially I start interacting with these virtual characters. There might be some multimedia here. I'm showing an image to immerse the learners into the situation that they'll be facing. They're part of a special unit to launch a new innovative product or service. This is a video from the CEO uh, that was easily created uh, uh, using a, a green screen actor. I should mention that uh, now with all the generative AI that's out there, a lot of this material can be now AI generated. So it increases the potential and the opportunities for us to create engaging multimedia uh, style uh, content. Uh, this was all done, this, this scenario, this series was created before uh, Gen AI really you know, took over, but now we're starting to implement that. Uh, so essentially, we keep interacting with these different virtual characters. There are different styles of interactions. There might be some uh, multiple choice questions that emerge, which can lead to decision trees. There could be some timers to increase the sense of, of urgency. Um, uh, and you can imagine this being played through individually or in groups. Uh, I'll explain that uh, a bit later. Uh, they can review uh, all of the data, all of the interactions as students, and of course we can also as host, therefore reinforcing the learning. Uh, learners like to go and see what others have, have put in there. This is a host setting. We can decide to make it private if we want to. Uh, I'll explain that a bit later. Here I'm just trying to show you broadly the experience. A different virtual character comes in to sort of like you know, bring about um, even more engaging storylines with with different voices and perspectives, and and maybe some people, some of the virtual characters might be uh, in favor of whatever the main mission is, or might not be favorable, and they're there to to to, to provide maybe some data or some uh, some misguidance, or maybe there to help. Uh, it's up to the learners to decide how these, you know, to what extent to listen to these voices uh, or not. So uh, I'll skip ahead to um, a version which I've clicked through a bit further along to explain that uh, we are just like Netflix organized in episodes and seasons and episodes. So we can go back through time through the table of contents. We can also add what we call game characteristics which are there to reinforce the learning on the basis of the learning objectives uh, that the author had in mind when creating uh, the specific uh, series. Um, and it can lead to uh, some uh, interesting dynamics around, uh, where we can basically use it to, 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 to see whether or not the students are going broadly in the right direction of applying the tools and techniques that we uh, get them to, uh, to be challenged with. Uh, we have right or wrong style uh, questions, or we have these game characteristics 
characteristic scores, which basically are sort of like more for the gray zone, meaning that your, your answers to the questions that you provide are, are, are broadly in the right direction of you applying the right tools and methodologies um, uh, that, that you're learning or applying through the life case uh, experience. Uh, I'm going to show you maybe one or two more interactions. So you see here, this multiple choice answer gave me a point uh, 70 out of 100 on social sentiment, 85 out of 100 on product readiness. And here in this scenario, we're trying to get the learners to, to think through the trade-offs between the two and, and why would they go more for one versus the other because of the learning objectives behind this one. I'll explain those later. Here, I'm just showing you the functionalities. Um, and they get feedback, sorry, um, uh, they can get feedback in the moment, which again, reinforces the learnings. Uh, this time is human reinforcement of humans, <laughs> not of the AI chatbots. Um, and, so, <clears throat> and so they get the chance to review, get feedback on the question, the, the answers that they provide directly in the, um, in the moment. So uh, we, we think, and we have tested this, is a very powerful way, again, to reinforce the learning uh, that may be coming through the, uh, the, the, the experience. So we can also have them um, uh, interact. Sorry, I'm trying to, oh, there we go. And we have also pop-ups uh, to make it even more immersive, which might make sense. Pop-ups with timers, in fact, to make sure that we sort of like immerse them into, uh, uh, into or get them to focus on a specific question that we want them to be uh, answering. The score will depend on how fast they answer the question here in this case. Again, this is all author uh, specified. Uh, it really depends on what is the objective behind each one of these uh, interactions. So uh, this I kind of click randomly, this is the wrong answer and I can review the question again. And then again, I get the feedback, I get to told what is what would have been the right answer. And in this case, I got zero out of a, out of a, of a thousand. Um, and maybe one final aspect is we can have open-ended text questions with or without timers, uh, which can be useful if we want uh, us if we want to, to to get the learners to write something like a, a, a piece of analysis or um, maybe a, a statement or vision or whatever the, the task may be. Uh, and now with AI power tools, we can actually grade the open-ended text question. So uh, we can obviously grade multiple choice style questions or, uh, or or variations thereof. But now we can also have grades of uh, of uh, open-ended text questions is is really deceptively powerful. Uh, obviously, it's more useful when you have larger cohorts, especially for large online programs, but can be used at any scale, really, uh, really quite powerful and really quite useful. So kind of automatic grading. And it provides also the feedback of the answer the students gave to their open-ended text question. So kind of gives a gives a, a really good first layer of, 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 of defense or offense, depending on which way you want to look at it. Um, just a little uh, plug-in for what's coming up in terms of features. We're integrated with OpenAI, and we'll keep integrating any one of the LLMs that's possible to integrate with. And so, and we're going to also improve the and change and adapt the interface on the, the learner side for the learners to have chatbot-style experiences. Um, you'll notice here the text is in Portuguese because actually this was a content that was created in Portuguese. So you can create content in any uh, language that you want. And we pre-populated some knowledge base for these virtual characters um, in Portuguese, but you can ask them questions in English and they'll respond in English. The world of AI is really quite powerful. We're using those tools a lot and it's really quite amazing what can be done. And here's just a really quick example. Um, this was for uh, uh, some uh, uh, an executive program where they were uh, from big, uh, you know, a tractor company and I pre-populated uh, that character with important information as it relates to the series, but also some fun little things around what's her favorite tractor. And so I asked the chatbot, what is that favorite tractor? And I, I get the answer and I asked her, oh, wonderful. Why did you choose that one? Well, I don't know, but about yours. <laughs> but obviously it can be used more for learning. Uh, the chatbot here was populated with Blue Ocean strategy knowledge. So the learner can engage with the chatbots to see and learn about um, um, Blue Ocean if you want to. So that was a quick little plug-in around um, the, the future features, well, the current features uh, of the live case web application, but that don't yet apply to the current uh, set of live cases, uh, which were written before this was all available. So that was a quick little demo of live case on the learner side so that we get a, a view as to what the experience is uh, now. Just checking the chat bot to see if there's any question. No, not yet. Okay. Great. So let me just uh, continue. Now, um, just some quick testimonials. Learners really appreciate the experience. They, it makes it feel 
much more live. It's obviously multimedia. It's more interactive. Uh, just last week, I uh, bumped into a, a student who took a live case experience recently, and uh, and she said it was really great. Uh, the, the the storytelling and and the interface really makes it so so modern and and so engaging. And she wanted to keep reading the 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 the, the live case content. So just to say that we generally get good feedback. And obviously, there's always some distractors, and it, it, in some instances where it doesn't work for a particular learner. But but uh, but broadly speaking, most people are very um, you know, uh, enthusiastic about their experiences. Um, it, because it's a digital delivery mechanism and at its most basic core, it can also include group work and role plays, uh, even maybe virtual reality if you have such tools available uh, in, uh, in, 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 your, in, your, in your school uh, or academic institution. So it can also give rise to a mixed uh, experience, which is really quite powerful as well. Now, uh, the, the experience can be taught alone or in groups. Uh, it can be done remotely or in, or in person. Uh, and the delivery can be done really globally at scale. So we've done like thousands of students simultaneously uh, over several days across uh, um, all geographies, especially during COVID that was particularly uh, demanding logistically. So just to say that it really runs in any style and, and format. And so this is now my segue to talk about how do we place live cases into our courses and, 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 and how do we uh, prepare for them? So how to think about placing uh, such, a, such a material? I mean, in, in a way, we've got some sort of generic answers, which I'll go through now in, in, these, in these bullet points. But I, I just want to, to start by saying that really um, it can be used or in, in, in different settings and different formats, depending on you know, your inspiration and your experience and, and also your strain. So uh, don't necessarily treat what I'm going to say as, as the only ways to run a life case. Uh, these are some of the ways that we have found have worked uh, in general and work and work well in, in, in general. But um, uh, we've, we've been very much surprised by how people have used them. And in fact, when we wrote some of them, because this dates before, uh, you know, specific milestones, you know, be it COVID, uh, AI, etc. Um, we, we found that educators become quite creative in, in utilizing a life case in a way that we maybe would not have thought of before, and but it's still possible to, to do. So um, just to say that basically there's a lot of modularity uh, behind the experience. Uh, and, um, and, and because it's so simple and intuitive to run, um, there's much less of the technology risk that we typically all feel when we're running a simulation. Um, and because it's a web application, a software as a service style sort of like interface, uh, so click-based, uh, it's something that's quite intuitive to, to to, to, to work with and therefore playful. And so we've seen that people are really, you know, you know, basically doing it and implementing it in different ways. But having said all that, here are some different ways that we can, you know, place a live case uh, in our, you know, course design or uh, be it a, a single class or, or, or thinking about, uh, um, you know, the, the, the experience at the level of the course altogether and even maybe potentially the entirety of a program. You know, that's something to be, uh, to be, to be thought of as, 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 as well. So uh, an individual life case, um, if we think about it, it's, uh, and, and again, it's really difficult for us to always say like, how long is a piece of a uh, thread? Um, uh, because the authoring tool is completely blank. It just has features that we have to put in content into it. Uh, the, the, the length can be whatever the author decides it to be. Uh, what we have found works reasonably well, however, is um, ex content experiences, which just for us to get a, a feeling of the unit of analysis, um, is, a, is an experience which can be, for example, for an individual spending, you know, 30 to 45 minutes. So essentially, we're trying to get ourselves as close as possible to sort of like reading a case study and maybe discussing it with your teammates um, uh, in preparation for a class. So if we think about that as sort of like a unit of analysis, and of course we can string more than one of those and we can make them much longer and then 30 to 45 minutes can be done in one single moment or can be spread over a week if we're doing this asynchronously, but maybe just have that in mind. It sort of represents a season with let's say three episodes, three to five episodes. Again, you know, due to our experience as educators, we wanted to create an experience which was sufficiently engaging where you feel that you're as a, as a learner, that you're going through uh, the experience 
um, in, a, in, an, in an engaged sort of somewhat playful way. And so each episode tends to sort of like last on average 10 to 15 minutes, including a bit of thinking time as they, as they sort of like finalize the tasks in each episode. And if we string three of them, it's basically the 30 to 45 of minutes of, uh, of, of length or, or experience, and that's as an individual. Then of course, as soon as you had a group or interacting with the content where they have to make the decisions jointly, um, then obviously it extends the time because then every decision moment or interaction becomes a moment of debate or agreement, disagreement, uh, influencing, not influencing. So it expands the time a little bit I and mean, you can think of it as doubling the time. Um, so if we're thinking about like what could be a, a good experience if we wanted to do this uh, uh, asynchronously individually would be 30 to, five, 30 to 45 minutes. And then if we want to do this synchronously in group, it can extend to like 90 minutes, maybe two hours. So a bit of intro in the beginning where you uh, immerse the, the learners or you give them some points of theory, get them to do the live case experience and then do a debrief. It can quite easily fill three to four hours uh, of, a, of, 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 a, of a synchronous uh, session. So having all these things in mind, <laughs> it can be, the live case can be placed essentially at the start, for example, uh, especially if it's a live case with, uh, whose content is, is sort of like um, general enough and, and covers a, a broad enough spectrum that it can maybe uh, cover a lot of the learning objectives that you might have uh, either as part of a single session uh, or as part of a broader uh, course. So you can basically yeah, use it uh, before the course starts as an introduction to the, to the, to the, the tools, the challenges that uh, your learners might face around the learning objective that you have for design for your course or sorry, for your session or your course um, um, uh, and, uh, and 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 or so yeah so at the level of the of the of the course it definitely can cover can be an introduction to what you're going to cover throughout the course and then at the level of a session you can sort of imagine it as being uh, a close complement or substitute to a normal uh, case study. So essentially, the learner could, um, you know, engage with it individually. Uh, you will then get to see all the progress. You will get to see, um, you know, what they've answered before they come to class, which is super powerful. Because let's not forget that when we give them a PDF, uh, they a might not read it, and b if they read it, we don't know what they're really thinking about unless we ask them a question on Qualtrics or some kind of like survey platform. Here is completely embedded in the platform itself, so we know how who, who has read who has not and what they've answered before they come to class which is super helpful for us as educators before we go into the debrief moment we, we can prepare our class uh, much better so that's really quite a nice way to place it either before course uh, or before a specific session on a more, much more narrow uh, learning objective as a complement or close substitute to a uh, to a case uh, study it can also be done in between classes as a red thread so again it depends on the uh, content of the of the specific live case that uh, we have in mind, and I'll give a uh, you know one or two examples once we go into the deeper dives on each one of the live cases. Uh, but essentially, you can if you think about like a a number of different sessions that might be covering you know thematically a, a similar set of uh, uh, of concepts, you can use the live case as kind of like a, of a red thread, either one episode between each teaching session, uh, or depending on the the breadth and depth of the um, uh, of the of the live case, an entire season between uh, teaching sessions and uh, or, or teaching moments. So that that's been another use case that's been proven quite nice. Um, again, being for courses which are in person, but certainly for courses which are online, where you know it's a nice way to keep the learners engaged, and again, a way for us to monitor whether or not they're actually uh, going through the experience as well. So that's kind of like a nice way to to use a live case. Um, and then um, another another way is basically at the end of a, of a section or a set of sessions or, uh, or or even a course as kind of like a, as a capstone. So you've been learning a lot about strategy. You've been doing a lot of uh, teaching around it. You've been giving your learners some 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 other case studies, maybe some other simulation. And then at the end, the live case can come in and be kind of like a, a capstone, maybe mixed reality sort of experience, which can be really powerful a way to end the course in this kind of like interactive, uh, you know, multimedia, maybe with role play kind of a kind of a way if there are role plays included in it. So basically three big ways to do it before, during, or 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 after. Uh, again, depending a lot around how you want to design your experience of the session or the course, uh, depending on the type of live case that you're thinking of, depending on the learning objectives and audience that you have, um, you will you will sort of like have to make those those trade-offs um, essentially. Um, 
So I feel like I sort of covered the asynchronous part, you know, because basically it's outside uh, of class as preparation. Uh, it can be done as for online courses, either as a complete replacement, uh, because some of the live cases have embedded in them some teaching moments where you have like a fictitious chatbot sort of educator giving some scripted uh, uh, and, and, and soon some AI style uh, teaching moments. And so it can replace, you know, potential parts of your course, therefore freeing up maybe some time for you to be teaching something else. Um, and then, okay, so one thing, however, about like how to do, how to place a live case will depend whether or not there are role plays. So historically, when, when, role, when live cases that had a role play embedded in them were, were first uh, designed and implemented, typically it was run completely synchronously in group from beginning to end, including the role plays. Um, so basically the learners are interacting with the web application, they're they're, they're chit-chatting with the virtual characters, um, uh, with their teammates, um, and then suddenly they have to go out and, and meet a banker to raise finance. Uh, and their banker meeting could be a role play that's organized either with the students uh, who get taken out of a group and get given a briefing and, 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 and do a role play, uh, or maybe some external role players if you have access to them. It could be alumni, it could be maybe other faculty members or... Um, maybe somebody you just bumped into <laughs> a few minutes ago who just happens to be available <laughs> when you need them to. Uh, but essentially, when, but, but, but what has happened over time is that what we've observed, and that's how we also now tend to use it a lot, is that we get the learners to do some of the live case interactions before the class anyway, and just spend the time in class to do the role play experience. Um, that works quite well in person, and that works really well on, in, uh, also for online style uh, courses. So whenever there's a role play, there's an element of synchronicity that gets reintroduced. We can always ask our learners to do the role plays outside of class by asking them to meet together and do it, which is entirely possible. But um, uh, at least when we get them to meet, or if we organize for them to meet in a synchronous moment, and we manage that, then it's obviously uh, easier to... Um, uh, uh, well, we can observe it and we can we can sort of like uh, uh, be there to help them and guide them and, and deal with some of the logistical issues that occur with, with role plays. Um, I should mention, not all live cases have role plays, but uh, it's just that authors have over time developed some live cases with role plays because then you can really get the best of all worlds in a way because you have the analytical piece mainly from sort of like the live case uh, aspect, although now with AI, we can get them to replicate some aspects, some behavioral aspects. And of course, we can with the scripted decision tree style, multiple choice conversations you can have with the chat uh, bots as well, uh, create some elements of reality that can allow us to test some behav behavioral aspects. But adding a role play component certainly helps us uh, uh, as educators sort of like, you know, uh, uh, focus in on some of the uh, behavioral aspects of, uh, of of the experience as well. So it's not just about like learning how to calculate an NPV, but it can also be about you know how can you actually negotiate uh, a, a good uh, a good loan agreement with a, with a banker who might not be so um, positive as you enter the room. Um, uh, but be, be that as it may, as soon as you introduce a role play, you, we obviously add an element of synchronicity. Okay, cool. And just natural breakpoints. I'll just check the. Um... Okay, I'll, I'll get to some of the questions later. Okay, I'll get to your question in a few minutes, Rebecca, um, because maybe the next slide will, the, you'll see, it. I'll show a demo about uh, the, the host side. Okay, so how do we prepare for, for this? Uh, it's really quite straightforward. It's really just like any other pedagogical material out there. Um, you know, there's obviously a, a teaching note that comes with uh, every one of these live cases. It's uh, useful to uh, obviously go through the content uh, as, a, as an educator at least once to try and, you know, understand what's going on in there and, and start to see the types of interactions uh, that, uh, that, that, that occur. So we have to familiarize ourselves with the content and the experience that's created through uh, each of the specific live cases. Um, and, and so once we have that, you know, sort of, uh, so that's kind of like, you know, just like anything else, you know, just like a case study or simulation, we have to go through that phase. Uh, hopefully we've made it simple and intuitive enough for um, it, both in the teaching note and I'll show you the dashboard um, so that uh, that whole onboarding process is, is sufficiently uh, easy and clear uh, for you. Um, and of course, we, we've thought about writing all these teaching notes and, and the content with the educators in mind, always kind of like, you know, what was useful for us would be useful for others is the logic that we've always applied. Um, so, okay, so what that's done, really from like, um, you know, from a sort of like technology perspective, there's, there's a very limited number of steps that we need to go through. And I'll show a demo about the host side just after this slide. Um, 
Um, but essentially the learners, and so if you purchase this through the case center, then your learners will then go directly into, so you will then have a hosted view. And then once the hosted view is, is, is activated and uh, um, it's activated as soon as you've added it to your course pack and uh, the students have, uh, or you or the, stu the institution has paid for it, I think, um, you then have the hosted view active and then it's active for the students and uh, they land into the, the, the experience that I showed you first, which is that sort of like the episodic first interaction with the first bot uh, to, to give it a, a name, uh, vir first virtual character. So that's where they land. And then you see the hosted side. Then there's maybe one or two little parameters I need to click. Like, do you want all episodes to be released all at once? Or do you want episodes to be released manually based on the schedule? Uh, I'll explain that in a, in a minute, uh, but that's, that's one setting. And then the other major setting is whether or not you want the students to be able to see each other's answers. We tend to say, leave it on so that the learners can check each other's answers. They really love it. And it's a way for them to engage with the content, engage with the material, challenge what their answers were. So really, I would, I would advise for most people who want to use a live case to leave that on, unless it's like a coaching live case where, where the entries are more like a journal and, and that information should be kept more confidential. Um, you know, I would say, leave it on. And that's basically it, almost. <laughs> then, then I'll show you, you can just review and check the result as they go through it or not. Uh, I'll show you in a second. Um, and then, uh, then the rest of the activities are, are, are very similar to what would be done if this were again, a normal case study or normal simulation. We have to create student lists. Um, we have to create groups of these student lists if we want them to create, if you, if you want them to go through this uh, as a group. So the way to visualize a group is that you might put four to five people in a group. Um, imagine this again synchronously. It can be on Zoom, on Teams, or in a physical breakout room, and they're around a table or they're around the virtual breakout room that they might be in. And one of the learners has access to the web application, shares their screen, and clicks through the experience like I just showed you uh, 15 minutes ago, except we have to debate the decision points. So, but uh, but just try to, to imagine that. So we have to, so so that's their experience. But from our experience, we have to, as educators, we have to prepare that list of students and prepare the, the groups they might be in. Uh, we also tend to, in the group naming, we tend to give them feline team names because it makes it a little bit more fun and engaging, completely optional, but then, and we provide feline team list as part of the teaching notes. Again, to try and sort of like, make it a little bit more different than a normal uh, session, you know, so that way they can be a cheetah or a lion or a tiger and uh, inevitably, whatever the age category, <laughs> whatever the level senior or teenager organization, they all love it. <laughs> so that's just a little fun additional thing. You can steal that and do it in anything. You don't need to just use it in live case. Um, uh, so that's kind of like a fun little one to do. Uh, if we're going to do something synchronous, we may need to organize a computer setup. If you want them to be in a breakout room with a computer, um, they may very easy to, to, to log in for them um, uh, and get uh, and get access. It's like any other uh, website. And then there's role plays. Obviously, we need to organize the logistics, the timings, maybe some prints. Um, um, uh, that that would be so like additional work for the for the late live cases which have these uh, role plays. Uh, then while it's happening, if we've decided to release the episodes uh, manually, well, we have to just remember when to release the episodes. Um, um, in, in basically one decision, one way to think about whether to release the episodes manually or not is essentially if there's a role play in it, it's better to release manually because you want to stop the experience at a specific episode, do the role play, then you release the episodes that should happen after the role play. If there's no role plays, typically just activate all the episodes uh, and then just let them run through the content uh, uh, at their own pace. Um, funnily enough, uh, the Cheetah teams always go faster than all the others. I promise to do a study one day <laughs> as to why that happens, but uh, we might have a, a suspicion there. Um, then we can check the learner progress. I'll show you Rebecca what you you don't need to necessarily. It's just uh, it's just nice to do. It's deceptively addictive as hosts. Uh, so um, you it, it, you you know one is drawn to checking where they're at. <laughs> so it's not necessarily expected, uh, but it, it, it's useful and, uh, and certainly it can become addictive. So uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's fun for us too, basically. <laughs> where are they at? Is Cheetah really going much faster than the other teams? What are they answering? Oh my gosh, really they said that? Or, oh wow, what amazing answer. So, you know, it's, it's deceptively ad ad addictive. Um, and then it can help us prepare briefs because then we won't, we don't enter the room with all the students looking at us uh, without having been a little bit prepared as to, you know, how they've experienced the journey. So it's, it's certainly useful to, to, to check the results as they go through it. Then after 
you know, all that is done, just like any course, you know, write down what worked, what didn't work so well, uh, what uh, could have been done differently, you know, uh, there's always like an instruction that could have been said maybe better, etc. you know, so just like, you know, any course material, uh, e even even potentially uh, PDFs require that uh, to, to a large degree. Okay, um, I'll go to demo two. So demo two is the host side. So when you, so this is the host view. So you'll see that from a user interface, uh, it looks very similar to the to the to the learner side. Um, again, we basically have three users. We have authors, hosts, and then players slash learners. Um, and this is an interface where a, a, a software as a service kind of an application where. Uh, we come in and we can be any one of those three. But if you're a learner, you only get access to the content for a hosted session that you were invited to. So it's not like you can come in and go in there and cheat, et cetera. But, uh, the, but the interface has the same look and feel uh, no matter which sort of uh, entry point that, uh, that you may have. So here uh, we're looking at a completed live case where uh, we can see the, uh, the, we can track the evolution of the completion of the different episodes. Uh, we can click this and we can see who has or who has not uh, uh, completed the live case uh, for the various episodes. Um, so that's kind of like fun. There's quite a bunch of participants here. Um, there's a leaderboard. The leaderboard is just integrated in it. Here it's a leaderboard on who finished first, but that's not really a relevant point. This live case does not necessarily need a, a leaderboard, but it's just a built-in tool. This is one of the characteristic scores of one of the live cases. This is uh, set in a, they're supposed to give a strategy review for, for, for a, a vineyard in Portugal around a global strategy. Um, but we can review uh, everything that these learners are, are, are answering. So I can go in there and then I can see their progress. I can see the, their scores. I can review every one of their interactions. Uh, I can see everything that they've uh, that they've answered here. What I'm clicking doesn't seem to have answered. Oh, there we go. Um, so we can review everything that they've answered. We can review the questions. So we can, if we want to, we can really deep dive and see everything that they've answered. Um, we can, before the class starts, review the content to prepare a class. Or when you, when I said the first preparation, you can review all of the content. You can read through the whole script. Uh, you can see if there's decision trees embedded in them and what the decision tree impact could be. You can see what are the correct answers, what are the time questions, etc. So you can review everything. Once the learners have, have gone through the interaction, you can go back and check all the interactions if you want to. Um, in the teaching notes, we recommend going for some specific types of questions. Usually they're at the bottom of, a, of, a, of each episode where we ask them the more uh, important uh, types of questions that relate to the episode. So if I click any one of these answers, I should be able to review what, uh, what, what they've answered. And this is what I mean about we can prepare the, the, the briefing session by saying, hey, uh, it's interesting, um, you know, an overwhelming majority of you decided to go for option A1, which is et cetera, et cetera. Uh, why, you know, but let me ask those who chose option A2, which is something else, why would you do that? And so, again, you can download all this, by the way, to create different graphical representations if you want to. So, again, a great way to check what's going on, but also to prepare the debrief. If it's open-ended text questions, you can review all of their answers. There's a sentiment analysis score, which, again, can be useful or not, depending on the scenario or series. And there's now open AI built into this, so you can create all sorts of summaries that are potentially useful for especially if the, the cohort is getting larger and larger for you to sort of like get a, get to grips with the overall um, you know uh, answers that the, the, the learners would have uh, would have provided again you can download and and do something else with it if you want so we can review all this if I go back to select the preparation what do we need to prepare well we decide there's like a very few set of uh, features that we need to set in so do we want auto release or not of the episodes if we click on then all the episodes are active from the beginning. Do I want this to be an individual experience or not, on or off? Do I want to hide the results from other players, on or off? Um, uh, so really just like two or three buttons to click. Here I've, I've clicked for not auto-release. So if I want to release the episodes, it's very straightforward. I just click on. And so this episode is now on. They finished episode one. I click episode two. I can click episode three while they're doing episode two. That way it just continues. And I can control the flow of the, the, the gate flow as they go through the experience. So this is all I need to do. Um, if I decide to un uh, to turn off uh, an episode, they cannot go to E4 if they haven't done E3. That's because of decision trees. We don't know what authors have written, so we have to create a platform which uh, applies for all use cases. So we can you cannot jump episodes because we don't know what happens in E3 that could lead to different decision tree storyline or or optics in E4. So 
If you stop E4, then they just stop at E, sorry, if you turn off E3, they just stop at E3, they can't go to E4. Then we just click E3 and it act, it's active and it doesn't break anything is my point. It's very hard to break this. <laughs> In fact, we challenge you. Um, player management, we can, you know, we can rewind students who didn't go through, if, let's say they make a big mistake and they really regret it, we can rewind them. Again, uh, why, why the rewind and why not, can, why not just be able to fix one specific answer because of decision trees again? Everybody loves decision trees until they start writing them <laughs> or using them. But one of the constraints is that you know, we, we, we can't know from a platform perspective what decision impacts which piece of content, et cetera. So uh, you can rewind the story. So at least that's one factor. You can delete the participant who, for example, dropped the class or, um, or for some other reason. Um, and, uh, uh, and of course, we can review the chats, which uh, for the AI chatbot style uh, experiences that are going to come up. So basically, oh, and sorry, one last thing is that we can also see and follow through a, an individual student perspective. So uh, we can go and, and, and click through the actual experience that the student has gone through. So that could be useful if a student is giving asking us a really specific question on something and we can check where they're at and et cetera. So anyway, hopefully I've shown you that it's quite powerful in terms of debris, but also hopefully reasonably simple to activate and to manage. So as a host, really you can, the, the students come in and all you need to really worry about is whether or not these episodes are active or not. Um, and then you can track or not the, the progress uh, as they go through the experience. And it kind of like runs on its own. It's sort of like a, a humming factory. Um, uh, but like I said, it's deceptively, um, deceptively uh, you know, addictive to go in there. Now, in the teaching notes, we provide some guidance as to how to manage the logistics. We give you, uh, you know, some initial template ways of, of approaching the, the implementation and the logistics um, of, of running a live case. But, but you know, what, what often tends to happen, and I'm giving you an example of something that I write for myself for when I teach, for example, the first global bank or, or to help you know, you know, people who want to use it is that I write like a specific set of little instruction notes for myself saying, create eight groups of four to six people, give them those names, print this document, print that document, you know, and don't forget to do this and that. And then I write myself a more detailed schedule. So again, in the teaching note, you have a, a first stab at a, at the schedule, but as you, as you refine, as you use this more and more, you'll, you'll, you'll find like any teaching material that, you know, we might say, oh, let's do this then, let's do that, that. let's give five minutes for this, 10 minutes for that, you know. And so we just write for ourselves, you know, additional, you know, help and guides for, for ourselves. Um, cool, so that's like the more extended demo of the hosted side. Uh, so yeah, the Canvas integration, essentially there's, there's two ways. One would be to example, copy paste the link uh, in fact, Antoinette, we should maybe think about that uh, and talk about it after this call, <laughs> see how that could work through the case center as well. Uh, but essentially, you can paste a link in the canvas is one measure, but now we have an XML integration, but it's, it, we just did it in the last few months, so we're still testing it out, but then it can create... Uh, so that, that would be like any other integration on can, uh, Canvas, so it, kinda, it can create um, a sort of like a, a, a left menu, sort of like a clickable... Uh, table content zone for your student for that that uh, thumbnail course. And if they click it, then two options, either the live case experience is embedded within Canvas, so they still have Canvas around and live case in the middle. It's okay, it feels a bit less immersive would be my argument, or you can set it for it to be a new tab where it's more fully immersive and a full kind of like live case experience only. Uh, we're not here to compete with Canvas, so we don't care really which one you go for, but it's, um, it's, it's more immersive if they're on their own tab in live cases. It fills the screen more. So it feels more like you're in a separate world. Whereas if you have the canvas things around you, you get, you can, it can distract the students. Um, so it's an XML uh, integration. So a clickable uh, integration, basically. Hopefully that answers your question, Tom. Um, okay, so where are we in the slide pack? So powerful insights, intuitive tool to get to that teaching moment. Uh, and you can also use it potentially for research, you know, um, especially if you, if you write your own content, then you can definitely use it for research, uh, for your own research. Um, so I thought we would then go through uh, now quickly, how much time do we have left, uh, Antoinette? Maybe five minutes or? Yeah, you've probably got about another five minutes. That should okay, be yeah. cool. So since we have five, <laughs> one minute per live case, uh, so we have first global bank, uh, 
uh, co-authored with uh, Nathan Furr on innovation. Uh, this one has a role play embedded in it. It's around applying the innovators method. It's, uh, they, they, they have a role of a VP of innovation uh, inside the uh, First Global Bank, which is this aging uh, large global bank that's trying to be more innovative and is trying to launch a new product or, 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 or service around social AI trading. Uh, it's quite a creative output on the other side. And they get to apply the innovators method, which is the, the tool from, from, from Nathan Furr, very powerful, uh, which uh, essentially, uh, so this is the complete innovators method tool uh, from insight to problem definition, to solution building, to business model before scaling in. The season one of live case of the first global bank live case is, is focused mainly on the problem. So the insight has been more or less prompted to the students and they get to work a little bit on the solution in this iterative way. Um, but um, you don't get to go through the complete uh, set of the model. We're focusing more on this slither, which is mainly around engaging your customers, really understanding their jobs to be done, their pains, their gains, uh, and, uh, and, and both through a live case interaction and then a role play uh, with three to four different customer personas who have different briefings where there's like a little insight that the learners have to uncover if they write, ask the right questions to the um, uh, to the to to the personas that they're that they're meeting, so really great works uh, wonderful for executives or or, or MBA uh, students, um, but like I said, undergrad as well. But uh, you know, proven and tested this one has lots of teaching notes and materials from Nathan Fur. He was really great. He, he lots of you know videos from him and documents and etc. So really cool. Uh, Plymouth was co-authored with Sam Abedir, who's a professor of leadership and negotiation at IMD, crisis management. Super exciting. That's a really popular one. Uh, they are a VP again, launching an innovative product, but this time it's not going so well for them. <laughs> and they have to, to deal with the crisis that ensues from, from the events. And uh, they have to write a tweet, a press statement. They have to write an action plan and they have to meet a journalist. So there's a journalist role play embedded in this one, which is really quite nice and powerful for that role play. Uh, you don't need to get anybody really from the outside unless you want to, you can. Uh, if you have a, an interviewer from uh, Die Zeitung or the BBC, that comes in that's great um or the india times uh fantastic you can maybe use them or an alumnus who alumna who can come in and do it great or you can use the students so we typically use the students and we brief them to be a journalist for another team and that works really brilliantly because then all the teams of the journalists role play at the same time and it's super powerful because just like all these role plays where we use the students they get to see the situation from two different sides so really quite cool uh, that one uh, and it's in the plant-based meat alternative sector, so quite a nice sector to be embedded into. So uh, as we're thinking about uh, social, uh, environmental and social skills, um, just to say the tool that's embedded in there is from Professor Daniel Dearman is one of the tools that's suggested to use potentially the trust radar, where the learners get assessed on their level of empathy, transparency, expertise, and commitment. You know, really super powerful debrief opportunity there at the end for that one. Uh, both of those are basically a half a day synchronous to, you know, the two, the, these are in the two to three hour range kind of thing, if you want to do this synchronously. Krugerbau, Strategy in an Age of Digital Disruption, three seasons, much longer, was initially built for being more of an online uh, asynchronous uh, individual kind of an experience um, set in the construction industry where 3D printing is, is revolutionizing the, uh, the world. And you can imagine now with AI tools uh, uh, as well embedded in it. And there was, there, there was we already built in AI in there. So um, in the sense of like thinking about AI as a, as a disruptor into this sector, super powerful. And there, there the tools are really broadly like, how do you create value? How do you capture value? And how do you think about strategy uh, uh, at, at sort of like a corporate level, uh, thinking through how do you, how do you, uh, uh, in, in, in a changing disruptive kind of a kind of a context. This one is kind of like, you know, automatic. You just let your learners go loose and they, they can learn on, on their own. So a great complement uh, uh, for strategy courses, uh, uh, or maybe entrepreneurship ones. Uh, Horizon Ventures, somewhat related. It's an acceleration program. You get to choose between 10 different industries uh, across. So here are the industries, all different kinds of Sports. I'm running out of time, so I'm going a bit faster, but hopefully you can read faster than I can, uh, I can talk. <laughs> uh, but essentially, the, the learners can choose any one of these 10 industries. They can think of it as a startup or a corporate innovation project, and then have to go through uh, customer persona definition, va value proposition creation, minimum viable product, uh, business model, and then pitch to investors at the end. Uh, really quite exciting. Uh, and it's kind of like a, supposed to go quickly and, and accelerate it. So that one is, again, three to four hours. The 
the, the, the first global bank, by the way, was meant to be built over three weeks online because each season basically covering a week. Uh, but again, only 60 to 90 minutes, uh, 45 to 75 minutes, depending on the, the diligence of the learners, but um, per week. Um, and then uh, finally, BioLife, super powerful leadership one. This one is more of a day-long experience, uh, multi-role. Uh, uh, groups organized of between six to eight with five C-suite executives and two observers who observe their performance as they go through. Um, so essentially, this is around launching a very innovative anti-aging drug. Don't we all want one? Um, in fact, you'll have a discount code at the end of this webinar. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, and um, they, uh, they, but obviously problems are rising. They can't hit the market properly. There's a rogue scientist that's done something that they probably shouldn't have. And so again, so like a lot of cri crisis kind of, it's not a crisis management, but it's like a, a leader, like leadership under pressure is the way to think of it. And these observers are assessing the, the performance of the C-suite team as they go through the experience. And at the end can decide whether to keep the team intact, fire the whole team or fire some of the team. Quite a, quite a powerful one uh, if run properly. It can be done virtually or, or, or in person, but it has to be done synchronously that one. Um, and it's usually the it's using you know Derek Dizzy's work, uh, but um, but also has some Edgar Schein models around the the individual, the role, the organization around it, and the, the different cultural layers uh, inside the organization. So these are the five uh, that we have here at the at the um, at the case center um, uh, on offer. Uh, but of course, you can author your own if you want. Shameless last plug: you have a studio, we can help you to author some. And then you can maybe get distributed to, through the case center in Harvard uh, if you want to uh, publish your life cases one day. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks, Antoine. That was brilliant. Now, I'm, there are a few questions that I think have just come to you and I, so you might want to have a look through okay. those while I just show everybody um, how to access live cases on our site. Let me just share my screen so that everybody can see. Okay, so hopefully now, you should be able to see our website. And there are a couple of ways you can find the live cases. You can use our search at the top. So if you just search for live case, you'll see here, click view all results for live case. That will take you directly into the products. Or you can go to the browse and buy menu and click on simulations and multimedia. And then there's a whole section here about live case. So let's click through. There are quite a few pages in this section. So hopefully if there are any questions that you still have after this, they'll be answered on these pages. Um, we talk about what is a live case from the perspective of a learner or as an instructor. We talk about how to preview a live case and I'll show you that in a moment and how to buy access to use a live case with your class. Um, there are also a whole load of FAQ pages, which cover the main points that people have when they want to use a live case, um, both for them from the educator point of view and also from students too. So at the bottom of the page, you have a list of the five live cases that we have. So if I just click through to view one, this takes you into our, um, our search database where you can find all of the information about the, the cases. You'll see here, it covers all of the topics, the abstract, learning objectives, in case you can't remember everything that Antoine just told you. And um, you can go and explore the settings and any related products. And then up in this green section on the, on the top right, this is really important. This is where you get into your previews. So as long as you're registered as an educator on our site, you'll have full access to all of this. And it's super simple. You click view the preview of instructor version. So we call that, that's what um, Anton was referring to as the hosted view. You can click and it will open a new tab for you. And you can see in here all of the different tools um, that the instructor has access to. So you can have a really good route around beforehand to figure out how things work. And from the same uh, point of view, you can see a preview of the learner mode works exactly the same way. And this is a full preview, so you can go through and experience it. I know, Rebecca, your question in here in the chat was about whether you have to look at everything. And Antoine said that it's definitely wise to, so you can get a full understanding of the case before you even select it to use in class. We also had a question about teaching notes. So I think Antoine covered some of this, but from here you can view the full teaching note. So let's just ping this up. And of course, it's on the other screen. Here we go. 
So this is a teaching note from Live Case, and you can see here you've got a lot of information um, from an educator's point of view about how to run the case. Um, they're very thorough, they're very helpful, so I would definitely suggest that you go and read all of these and get totally familiar with everything before you make your decision about whether you're going to use one of these with your students. We have lots of people say that they're, they're a bit nervous about using something like this because they, they need to fully understand it. It's different to a PDF where you know the students have got pages one through 15 or however long it is, but there are lots of tools to support you feel confident with the material in class. So if you do uh, decide to use a live case, it's super simple. There are two buttons here, add to basket and add to course pack. If you want to use the case on your own VLE or LMS, so Canvas, Blackboard, wherever you want to put it, you add the case to your basket and you, you tell us how many students you want to use um, the case with and we set you up access for that number. You get a link and you put that on your LMS. The students click through, they have to put in their email address um, and they set up a password, but again, that's all GDPR um, approved. Um, and that takes one of the seats off of the number that you've bought. You also have tools in your library to be able to add more students, um, buy more places if you want to, if you run out. Um, so it's all really straightforward and we guide you through that process if you, if you choose this option. The Add to Course Pack, we have a course pack creator on our site. So if your school doesn't have an LMS or if you want to use something that's separate from your LMS, you can add live cases along with all the other material on our site to a course pack. This also has an advantage. There are two payment models for this. So you can either use school pay if you're a member organization. So the school would pay. But the one that people really like is student pay. So if this is additional material or for some reason you need students to pay for it, you can add it to a student pay course pack and they get access and they buy that for themselves as they go through. So that provides a bit of additional flexibility. Um, you also can see the prices on here. Each live case is priced, set, uh, priced differently, so you might want to look at that and think about um, that in terms of your budgets too. So I think that's everything. We'll make sure we include a link to the live case page on our follow-up email. Um, I am conscious of time, so I'm going to stop sharing and see if we have any questions. Antoine, is there anything that you picked up that you wanted to answer? No, I think uh, I believe I've, I've answered a lot of them. I just wanted to, to thank you for thanking me, I suppose, for, for well, thank you. It was inspiring for me, too. Um, it, um, it's something that we wanted to build for ourselves, like I said. So hopefully it's useful to you, too. Yeah, and it's great for you to be able to share that with other people. Um, I mean, that's the premise really behind the Case Centre is providing access to people and a, a facility and a platform for people to share what they develop for use in, in their own classes with people all around the world. So it's just a perfect match, this. OK, well, if there are no other questions, we'll wrap up. So thanks to everybody for joining us. And I really hope that you're inspired to give live cases a go. Um, we'd love to hear your thoughts on the session. I think Zoom has probably popped up something in a browser window, but we'll also include a link to a short feedback form in the, in the email that we send you afterwards. If you'd like to do a deeper dive into case teaching or writing, have a look at our workshop pro program. Um, our next case teaching workshop is in June and it's in person for the first time since COVID at London Business School. So we're super excited about that. The writing uh, cases web, uh, workshop that's running at the same time is fully booked. So the next one of that will be online in the fall. So there's details about that on our website too. And we'll be in touch tomorrow with a follow up email and a link to the recording of the webinar. So thanks again, Antoine, for sharing all of your insight. It's been super interesting and I, I'm sure that everybody has really enjoyed it. And thanks to everybody for attending. So stay safe and healthy and hopefully we'll see you at another Case Centre webinar soon. Take care, everybody. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye.